Okay, I may have to take back what I said in last week's video. I think it was episode 32. Anyway, I'm down in the little pump room with the two redundant pumps here and the two redundant heaters and all the water lines come in and out and then of course the big bladder tank and uh, for our little well group here this is our little 2k numbered uh, well system and I went ahead and shut down the water going out of the bladder tank that would normally go to the the little two mains and I don't think I can show them from here but I will in a moment there's two mains that have shut off and one goes up the hill to a couple lots on this well and then another main goes down on a trunk line to the um, our lot and one other neighbor lot down on that trunk line and I had thought what I was seeing yesterday last week was a leak here and it was depressurizing but I think there's a legitimate reason for it and that was here this line goes outside to uh, water the uh, animals and it only does like I don't know a quart an hour or a half a gallon an hour some small amount but that would be enough over time to depressurize the whole unit and bring the pressure down. That might be what I saw happening. So I've gone ahead and shut this water off to the animals. Hopefully none of them will die of thirst. Um, and so I went ahead for the last 12 hours and just tested the pressure in this well system itself and nothing seems to have changed. Maybe one or two PSI over the last 12 hours and that's probably just settling from uh, when I first turned off the water. Um, I mean the power to this whole system. So what I'm going to do next is continue testing outward from here until I see if there is any kind of real leak or not. So um, next thing is to open up the water here from this from the system in here and let it go out towards the two mains and their shutoffs and I've already retightened them to make absolutely sure that there's hopefully no kind of possible leak. So I'm going to open this up and that'll let the water go out to the street to those two mains. And then I'm going to let this sit overnight, maybe a full 24 hours after I turn the power on here for a little while and repressurize everything and then take a reading where the pressure is. And then I'll uh, have an idea if there's any kind of leak between the pump system in here, this well system, and the main that's out in the street here, these two mains. And you might see the uh, shutoff stick coming up over there. Now go. Let's get over to the uh, power now. <clears throat> So I'll go ahead, lift this guy up, bring the panel open, and I'll turn the well on, that breaker, and this one's the whole booster oops, system. Oops, that fell off. Well, I'm going to need to get to it again in a few minutes, so I'm going to let this system run if it wants to run. So far, I don't hear it firing off. So, I'm gonna double check that just a second. Okay, these are the two water mains here along the street. One on the left here goes down to our property and one or two other properties are on this trunk line that goes down the hill to Tanabo Trail and then left and down that way. While the one on the right here goes up a trunk line to a couple more properties, maybe three, that are on this trunk line up the hill here. So the pump just turned off, and I'm going to go ahead and kill the power again and just let these 
sit open for the next 12 to 24 hours and see if the pressure drops at all. I'll take a reading now. And it's just a short distance I'm trying to diagnose and determine if there's any kind of leak going on that's depressurizing between these two um, little uh, mains here with their shutoffs and the pump, little pump house over here. So if I can determine that, that there's no leak there, then I can go on to confidently testing each of these trunk lines up their respective paths and see if there's any kind of depressurizing leaks going on there. But at least I'm confident now the main pump house does not have any. And I was just being th possibly thrown earlier when I was initially testing the pump house by that little water feature for the wildlife that we have here in Deer Canyon Preserve. You can see the other side here, um, that little tiny line goes to this little watering trough here. And here's the line itself that goes in and puts in a periodically a, like a gallon an hour or a quarter an hour or something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go take the reading and then check back again tomorrow. I think this is like morning three here. Looking out from the deck across to the Manzano Mountains. Got a much clearer skies at the moment. The air is pretty clean as uh, winds really haven't picked up yet. I'll just try to zoom in a little bit. Okay, after 24 hours, I just got back down to the well site here. So what we were doing in the last 24 hours was testing from the mains here back to the um, pump house here if there's any sort of you know leak of the pressure. So everything looked good, perfect, no change in pressure. So now I'm going to go down and test the lower trunk line which goes through our property and a couple others. So I'm opening it up and I'll be driving down there to check it here in just a moment. Okay, I got down to the bottom of the trunk line on our property here, but it's a neighboring lot where the actual clean out is. And I just uh, opened her up and I think we can see some uh, remains of the water here when we uh, had this little uh, clean out here spewing out a lot of water. I let out probably 20 gallons, 30 gallons maybe. It was a lot of water. Just wanted to make sure it all looked good. There wasn't any crud in the line coming through. Everything looked clean. Anyway, it's shut tight now. So I'm going to go back up to the well and make sure everything's well pressurized and looking good before I turn the power off. And then we'll wait 24 hours and see how it looks for the, this lower trunk line. And then uh, we'll do the same test for the upper tr trunk line tomorrow so we can make sure if there's any leaks, we'll know which trunk line or, bo or both lines have a leak. And we'll know which ones we can go, we need to go and investigate. Hopefully we'll be real lucky and everything that I uh, saw earlier in a prior video was just related to watering the animals. Keeping my fingers crossed. Cheers. Okay, just checked on the lower trunk line, which is where our property's on, after letting it sit here pressurized for 18 hours, and discovered that it dropped about 100 PSI in that time frame. So we definitely have some kind of leak going on in the lower trunk line. So I've gone ahead, shut that trunk line off now, and pressurizing the line going all the way up. See behind me here. This road here, which is the upper trunk line, goes about a thousand feet up to the to the clean out above where I'm standing now. And uh, we opened it up, made sure water was flowing through good. So um, got a lot of the air out of it. Um, hopefully all the air is hard to tell. 
Um, it just seemed to be sputtering less and less over time as I kept playing with the, the water flow up there. Anyway, the system's recharging, and as soon as it's done, I'm going to go ahead, kill the power, take a picture of where the pressure gauge is, and let it sit another 12 to 24 hours and see what happens with the upper trunk line for these properties that are up behind me. So this is the actual well itself, and I'm not feeling any any vibrations at all so maybe it was just a timing thing but you know four or five six hundred feet down from here is where the actual submersible pump is that's uh, bringing the water up and then it goes over in the middle of these rocks here there's a couple uh, of those 1500 gallon submerged uh, underground water storage tanks 1500 gallons each here and and here and they have a little uh like a toilet tank the little uh what do they call the little bob thing that shuts off the 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 well pump and all that once they get up to their 1500 gallons in each tank so that's happening right now as, as we're waiting here so we've we've used a lot of water going up up this hill on the the upper uh, trunk line there for getting all the water up because it is like a two inch pipe so it's going to be moving a lot of water and of course while I was at work today Judy was supervising the job site here say hi Judy hi so we're making progress getting things done and just like me, she's babysitting the dog too, but she's got a little micro dog while I had the bigger one that I like to play fetch with all the big sticks around here. And the little micro dog is more of a lap dog. Anyway, we're finishing up for the day. We're losing light pretty quick here. But we got uh, all the posts, all six of them up, and then of course the cattle panel and the upper rebar. We're going to build up the roadway up to this level through here. And then, of course, the guardrail would come across here to this level. And we'll, of course, once the guardrail's in place, chop the top of the middle ones off. Bring it down to the same height. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Making progress. Keep hearing that thunder in the distance and starting to sound like it's a little more overhead. I can feel quite a bit more rain coming down, but not quite. You know, you can kind of see it. Little drops coming down here along the guardrail. I can feel it hitting my hands and my feet. Multiple drops, you know, every second or so. But it's not quite enough to and really dampen the parched soil around here and the very thirsty trees and wildlife, I'm sure. But keep our fingers crossed that it opens up more. We get, get enough of a soaking to really reduce the fire threat around here. That would really be wonderful. Okay, so one of the things that I turned back on was this little uh, dribble of water coming out now. That's the thing that's like a quart an hour or a gallon an hour. So a little dribble indicates just uh, how we keep the animals' little watering trough up here above the pump house um, working and stuff for the wildlife. That's one of the things we... Every uh, well group here in Deer Canyon Preserve will uh, contribute to is the effort of providing water for the, the wildlife here. 
So that's our little share of it. And everything's kind of coming back to normal after finishing all the uh, pressure testing on the two uh, trunk lines. And so I'm kind of done. The good news and bad news being that for the property owners that are in the upper trunk line here, they're lucky. They won't have their uh, uh, road dug up, whatever it takes to find a, a leak. Theirs is good. Didn't lose any pressure over a 24 hour period. While those of us, including yours truly, will have to dig somewhere. And we anticipate it's gonna be in this little low lying area along the road here. And you see how the road comes to a little peak here and then just beyond that, the trunk line goes down, little Tanabo Trail to three properties, including ours up there. But this little low area, there's a little um, river channel that comes through here from the, the hills, hills, mountains up here and crosses through here through some culverts and then goes down to our property where our big culverts went, are going in or went in. And uh, that's where we uh, anticipate that the leak is, is probably somewhere through this area where there's a little bit of a downshift and drop in elevation. But there's a way we can calculate the pressure loss based on the volume of the water and the altimeter reading at the um, well meter and all that. There's ways to calculate it, though I'm not an engineer, so I can't tell you exactly how, but I'm going to go talk to the engineer when he gets back from vacation and see if we can determine pretty quickly with a few altimeter um, readings just where it most likely the leak is and uh, focus on digging up that area and trying to find that leak and get it repaired and then test again and hope there's no more leaks beyond that point. I imagine it's going to be something where the first leak, um, once repaired, is kind of hiding any other f leaks further downstream. So we'll just have to find that first one and keep our fingers crossed that's the only one. But there could possibly be more, I suspect. And I don't think the, this calculation approach will show us where they all are. I think it's just where the first one will, will be found. So I wish I could say cheers, but not at this point. It's kind of a little grim disappointment that we're going to deal with this instead of moving forward with our, our build and design and permitting and all that stuff. And, uh, of course, we don't want to sink money into... That whole process of building till we know we've got a stable water situation. I mean, that's more critical than probably anything out here. I mean, we can live off grid without sol with uh, without a power grid and just do solar and battery banks and inverters and charge controllers and all that good stuff. And of course, septic, so we don't need sewer. But water, you know, you really need to have that as a, a good backup. You can do some rainwater collection, and we plan on doing that, but we still want, need the well as a backup and as a kind of secondary supply because you won't always have enough rain rainwater collection. No matter how you try and conserve water and recycle and reuse it, um, very good likelihood that you're going to run out and need that well as a backup. So... Thank you for watching an episode of Nature Preserve Life in Mountain Air, New Mexico. If you'd like to follow along and support our channel, please press the subscribe button and gong that bell to be notified. After all, it's free. Free is a very good price. In the future, we will plan to focus our episodes on our eco-friendly build of earth and construction and dark night astronomy, that big guy there and tourism of the regional area, as well as establishing a Patreon account for the sole support of wildlife in Deer Canyon Preserve. So stay tuned. Cheers.